Oscar Four, India Hotel Oscar Four. India Hotel Oscar. Uh, Roger, Roger. India Hotel Oscar. Yeah, Roger, Roger. That's correct. I'm calling from North Carolina. Uh, 1980. Over. Uh, Roger, Eddie in North Carolina, and what radio are you running, sir? Uh, Roger, Eddie in North Carolina, and what radio are you running, sir? I'm ready to on call. I'm on 7300. I come 7300, Roger, Roger. Roger, Roger. Eddie, I understand you're on a dipole antenna that's only like, uh, what, 20, 25 feet high? Is that a Roger? You're on a dipole antenna that's only like, uh, what, 20, 25 feet high? Is that a Roger? Uh, that's Roger. 25 feet high. Roger. Roger. Well, yeah, you know, um, you don't have to drink or smoke to have a good time, Eddie. Uh, 25 feet is a, is a nice height. I wouldn't uh, go out of my way to change that. Uh, your uh, ERP is uh, occurring uh, sky wave. So uh, height is, uh, you know, anything in that area, 25, 30 feet, will just do, do magnificent because uh, it's not like VHF or UHF where you've got to get up uh, 70 feet or something like that. Uh, you just have to be up high enough that the ground doesn't affect uh, the tuning as such. And uh, 25 feet uh, should uh, do you fine. Uh, and uh, so, you know, then you're... you're uh, radiation occurs uh, from that uh, wire broadside to the wire uh, into the atmosphere and uh, your uh, sky wave uh, from there. So, and, and just remember also that the way you uh, you align your your dipole, your radiation curve will be broadband a broadside to your um, uh, the way you deploy the antenna. Uh, not off the ends, but broadside to that. So if if you have a particular areas that you would like uh, to try to uh, to reach more than others, then I would uh, uh, put my um, antenna a broadside to that location. And so most of your a lot of your uh, radiation pattern will occur in that direction. Roger. Your uh, radiation pattern will occur in that direction. Roger. Roger, I understand. I've got my antenna now about 10 degrees off of north. And uh, sometimes I turn it north, southwest. But somebody told me the other day, somebody in Germany was almost commenting. I could leave it any direction. Okay. Yeah, Eddie, I'm catching a quite a bit of blow by from somewhere. I'm not real sure where, where you know it's on the upper side or lower side of the frequency that we're operating on, but uh, I'm getting quite a bit of trash uh, coming in. But anyway, yes, uh, if you will think about it, uh, that um, radiation will occur broadside uh, to your um, your antenna. So uh, again, um, if you're running that antenna north and south, your radiation pattern will be east and west. And uh, so you being in uh, North Carolina, I would almost uh, choose to run my antenna east and west, so I would radiate north and south. Roger, roger. East and west, so I would radiate north and south. Roger, roger. Uh, thank you very much. I have a west one that runs. Yes, if you want to go uh, north and south, and that's what, if you're in North Carolina, uh, you know, if you, well, just think about it for a minute. You're in North Carolina, so if you run your antenna uh, uh, north and south, you'll be radiating east and west. And unfortunately, what that means is that your east signal will be getting lost into the sharks. Uh, we, you know, will be lost uh, into the ocean, unless, of course, you want to work Europe, 
Uh, but if you're normally looking for QSOs within the United States, uh, if you go uh, east and west, you radiate n north and south. If you go north and south, you radiate east and west. Uh, so, you know, you being there on the, on the coast, more or less, I would uh, string that uh, antenna east and west, so I would uh, uh, transmit to north and south. Roger. So I would uh, uh, transmit to north and south. Roger. Uh, understand, understand. I'm going to turn my engine more. Do you advise broadside wind and season with reception? Over. Yes, sir. Now, Eddie, if you're, if you're a man of immense wealth, I'm joking, but if you would be interested, the truly interesting thing would be to put up two dipoles, one uh, east and west, one north and south, with an A-B switch. And now you got the best of both worlds because you can sit there and play with that A-B switch and find out which one's hotter. You know, I do that quite a bit uh, because, uh, you know, you... And, and sometimes in the same QSO, Mother Nature switches and uh, things start looking hotter on the uh, other antenna. So, uh, you, you know, you're like uh, having a, a directional antenna which costs... You know, at these frequencies, it uh, costs thousands of dollars. Well, not thousands of dollars, but, uh, you know, big antenna up there on the roof, 40-foot uh, uh, radials and all that stuff. No, just uh, two dipoles, one running east and west, one north and south with an A-B switch. Roger. Two dipoles, one running east and west, one north and south with an A-B switch. Roger. Uh, understand, understand. Uh, I have my antenna set where I can turn it by hand in any direction I want. I have extra clips on the end of the wire that connects the high bolts on my set, and so I go out and turn it by hand. And Now, Eddie, I was just copying just a little bit of that, and I want to try to get you back on Milford, uh, uh, PA. I, I think that might be the better. That's my go-to SDR, just as a beautiful SDR, except when it's kicking me off every 10 minutes for something or the other. And, I, you know, I wish I could get a, um, a password where they'd leave me alone, but uh, I guess my... Uh, my fate is that I just have to keep fighting them. Anyway, uh, come back and uh, tell me what you were saying again, Eddie. Anyway, uh, come back and uh, tell me what you were saying again, Eddie. It, it's been a fun the, uh, the thing that I have uh, on my hand, uh, and it seems to work out fine for me. I have high bolts connected to my back and clips on the end of my just undo the clip, turn it, and then hook it back up, and it seems to work okay. Over. Okay, I'm not real sure. I can't quite, uh, I didn't quite copy all of that. But uh, like I say, uh, you know, if you would uh, like an experiment, uh, you sound like a, a gentleman that might be interested in uh, checking out uh, different uh, aspects. So, you know, the thing is, uh, uh, there's an old adage, uh, there's nothing better than the right antenna at the right place at the right time. And uh, the only way that you can in kind of ensure that that happens is have more antennas so if you had a dipole running north and south and one running east and west and they both came in on separate coaxes to an AB switch you would have the best of both worlds well actually you could have an ABC switch if you used a, a double pole uh, switch so you could uh, combine combine them as a uh, co-phase uh, so you would have three options you would have uh, north and south east and west and then a combination of, of both of them uh, so uh, gosh uh, you know that could be very interesting as far as uh, copying the mail Roger very interesting as far as uh, copying the mail Roger uh, very good I understand and if I do that and I Half wavelength instead of quarter wavelength, but I'm running now instead of quarter wavelength, but run my 20 on a half wavelength. Roger. Well, uh, 40 meters, uh, 32 feet, some, somewhere in there. Uh, 
per you know per leg uh, 32 feet uh, per leg quarter wave is, uh, is your typical half wave dipole because it's split in the middle and that's uh, that's the antenna that you want to want to use that's the one I'm familiar with uh, and the efficiency of that antenna I've conducted a lot of tests uh, at uh, 600 miles with different kinds of antennas uh, against uh, a uh, half-wave resonant uh, dipole antenna and invariably the resonant uh, half-wave dipole antenna is uh, the most efficient. Roger. Okay, I am uh, just across the Ohio River from Louisville, Kentucky. We're on the Indiana side of the Ohio River, right at Louisville. Roger. We're on the Indiana side of the Ohio River, right at Louisville. Roger. Roger, understand, understand. You come in pretty strong here in my area. Uh, you're about five by eight. Over. Yes, sir, Eddie. Well, you know, when we were building our station, uh, our mantra was uh, 20 over from Montreal to Miami with a hot spot through the Carolinas. And uh, although, uh, you know, propagation may shift around, uh, our antenna supports uh, its mission fairly well. So uh, we do uh, really well uh, up and down the East Coast, particularly through the uh, Carolinas also, Roger. Roger, I'm located in Keene, North Carolina, about 20 miles from Mount Airy, North Carolina, 20 miles from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. My exact location. Uh, Roger, Eddie, now you're running that 7300. If you'd be interested in the uh, setup procedure for that 7300, it starts with you engaging your compressor at a 3. Uh, it's a token amount. Uh, you'll never hear it on the air, but it is the beginning of our setup procedure. Compressor on at a three, Roger. Of our setup procedure, compressor on at a three, Roger. Uh, my compression is, I've got it set at five. Uh, five. Roger, Eddie. So you want to pull that down to a three, sir. Wait, when you get past a three, you start sucking up things between words. And the, and the more you get past three, the more things you suck up between words. And pretty soon you're going to be hearing, uh, you know, folks fighting uh, three houses down. And you, you don't want that. So a three is a token amount, uh, but it is the beginning of the uh, setup procedure. Roger. Roger, Eddie, now you might have hit your VFO, sir. Uh, you might uh, investigate lock. If you have a lock on that, uh, I'm not sure the 7300 has a lock or not. I think it does. I always engage my, uh, my radio in lock uh, so I don't uh, uh, go sailing on the VFO, Roger. Sorry. Roger, you're high on frequency, sir. We're on uh, 7188. Uh, put your VFO back on 7188000, Roger. 7188000, Roger. 7188, 7188, Roger. There you go, Eddie. Good to see you back. <laughs> and you might read up on that radio and see if you have a lock. Uh, that lock said VFO, Roger. And see if you have a lock. Uh, that lock said VFO, Roger. Uh, it, it does have. I'll, I'll, I'll check that. And my settings now, I've got 100% power, microphone gain 50%. All right, now, uh, what the second part of our setup uh, is uh, you move to your AOC meter with mic gain in hand, and as you speak fairly rapidly, 100, 200, 300, so you can see what the meter is reading, you adjust that AOC where it's reading mid-scale to two-thirds by way of uh, mic gain control. In other words, turn that mic gain up or down to where the AOC is reading mid-scale to two-thirds. Roger. To where the AOC is reading mid-scale to two-thirds. Roger. 
I don't know if you want to do that now or just uh, put a note to self on that. I don't know if you want to do that now or just uh, put a note to self on that. I'll just turn it down to 45 percent. Things better. No, no, don't. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mike Gain only serves to adjust the AOC. Uh, do not, uh, you know, concentrate on your ALC meter uh, for mid-scale to two-thirds. Turn your mic gain up to where your ALC meter is reading mid-scale to two-thirds as you speak fairly rapidly, 100, 200, 300. To two-thirds as you speak fairly rapidly, 100, 200, 300. In other words, the only way you can adjust an ALC meter is through through your voice. So you have to be in the transmit mode. Transmit mode, and you're just saying 100, 200, 300, and looking at your ALC meter and adjusting that ALC meter where it's reading mid-scale to two-thirds by way of mic gain control. And I, I can give you a note on that. Note to self uh, that uh, when uh, you have timer, you know, you want to figure that out, uh, you can do that. Roger. Roger, Roger. Mic gain control uh, will adjust your ALC uh, to a mid scale to two thirds. And once you get that, then uh, are you using the uh, stock 7300 mic or what mic are you using on that radio? Are you using the uh, stock 7300 mic or what mic are you using on that radio? Uh, I'm using the microphone and with the radio. Yes, sir, using the stock hand mic. Okay. Uh, let me give you uh, a, a note to, to self. When you work that stock mic, do not work directly into it. Pull it to the side of your lips and work across it. Pull it to the corner of your lips and talk across it. Do not talk directly into it because you get a lot of uh, mouth noise and, and plosives and stuff like that. So when you pull that mic directly to the side of your mouth and talk across it, uh, that mic will be perfect uh, uh, as it is. Otherwise, you'll have to get a windscreen. But if you just work across it, uh, it does uh, fairly well. Roger? Okay, and you have uh, fallen down quite a bit now, uh, Eddie. I, I could, uh, you were even with my noise level. Try one more time with what you last said. Could, uh, you were even with my noise level. Try one more time with what you last said. I've got it on my mouth. I'm talking across it. Uh, give me a little bit longer transmission. Let me listen to you. Give me 10 seconds on your antenna system and uh, let me hear you. Uh, you, you've dropped down quite a bit. Uh, you're into my noise. But uh, like I say, just work across that mic. Uh, do not work directly into it. And uh, then uh, maybe uh, tomorrow, or not tomorrow, but next Friday, you could join us. And uh, maybe we have a little bit better signal coming in. And we could talk about uh, what we need to do EQ-wise uh, to get that radio uh, perfect. So uh, let me say uh, 73 for now. Uh, Eddie, and uh, you have a great afternoon, a beautiful weekend, Roger. Yes, sir, 73. And that, with that, uh, we'll be concluding our uh, Friday afternoon QSO vlog net since uh, 3.30 we've been rolling and we're rolling tape. Anybody that participated, if you want to hear what your radio sounds like, if you go to YouTube and do a call letter search for Kilo Charlie 9 Victor Kilo Victor followed by today's date 6 11 21, that will take you uh, directly uh, to this recording. If you uh, do just a call letter search on YouTube, that will take you to our QSO vlog page where we're now 
I'm running about 1,650 uh, Cuso Vlog recordings, and uh, you can peruse and find all different kinds of uh, people's audio and, uh, you know, get ideas, uh, you know, and uh, very interesting. But with that, uh, we will conclude today's broadcast. This is uh, KC9 VKV returning the frequency to normal uh, everyday uh, <laughs> amateur radio use. This is KC9 VKV clear.